This is Jerry Beck of CartoonBrew.com, and I'm here to discuss So Much for So Little, an unusual Warner Brothers cartoon that won an Academy Award. And it was directed by Chuck Jones, and Carl Stalling did the music, and the usual animation staff is all involved. But this is not a general entertainment cartoon. This is a special release that was released to theaters, to the general public. It's an effort to explain the function, benefits, and personal cost of the U.S. Health Department. And the film is dated. It's telling people of the era that a little bit coming out of your paycheck is going to pay for all these wonderful services. I don't know if we have those services anymore, and the little bit that they talk about coming out of your paycheck is three cents a week, and clearly things have changed a lot. But it's an interesting time capsule of late 1940s Americana and a record of our post-war federal health and social welfare program. It's really good just for that purpose. It's also a great example of what the Warner Brothers animators were capable of beyond the typical Looney Tunes and Merry Melodies. Untreated sewage running into our pretty creek. And Mr. Fly's feet are not very clean. In fact, they're very filthy and loaded with germs like those that cause dysentery. If some of these dysentery germs should happen to infect Johnny at his age, he not only won't be president, the chances are just about one out of two. This film won the Oscar not in the cartoon short category, but in the best documentary category. And it actually won in a tie with another film. The other short was a film called A Chance to Live. It was one of the 20th Century Fox March of Time shorts. So there were two winners this year, and one of them happened to be an animated cartoon by Warner Brothers, directed by Chuck Jones. And my staff. Part of our job is to clean up just such unsanitary conditions. Eliminate open sewage. Do away with fly breeding places. And give your Johnny a new shot at the presidency. Well, John, we got over that one all right, didn't we? Maybe you'll get to be a year old yet. But you've still got some very tough customers to meet on the path of your life. Like whooping cough and diphtheria, rheumatic fever, and... The narrator of this film is Frank Graham. He's one of my favorite unsung voices of the 1940s. He appears in a lot of Warner Brothers cartoons, MGM cartoons, Columbia cartoons. He was the voice of the fox and crow at Columbia. He's the voice of the little mouse in King Size Canary, a great Tex Avery cartoon, and he narrated a lot of Warner Brothers cartoons. So his voice is very familiar to those of us who love these great old cartoons. The cartoon doesn't really have much animation in it. It has some good moments, has some great layouts, and all done really just to perfection by the crew at the Warner Brothers cartoons. Look who's in the fourth grade. Hiya, John. Shh. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, mind if we look around? Warner's won five Academy Awards for cartoon short subject, and they were quite active in producing industrial and educational films for the U.S. government during World War II. You're probably familiar with the private snafu cartoons that Chuck Jones and Frizz Freeling and Bob Clampett made. They did 26 of those for the Army-Navy Screen Magazine. They also did a couple of other shorts for the government, one called Point Rationing of Foods, and uh, they did a Bugs Bunny, Elmer Fudd bond-selling film, Any Bonds Today. So this was not unusual for them to do something outside of the traditional entertainment cartoons that they did. This is essentially an illustrated lecture, but even so, uh, Jones doesn't hesitate to use humor in the appropriate places, as well as his trademark use of strong poses and facial expressions in the drawing, and there's some really great background paintings here. You want to make a very happy couple. You're fine, healthy-looking specimens. Nothing wrong with you, huh? Are you sure? Let's be really sure. Step in for just a couple of minutes. Now, don't worry, John. It's a very simple process for you. And I know Mary won't mind it either. It's not so simple for your blood, though. Let's see what happens. 
First, it's numbered. Background painters Paul Julian, Robert Griberek, and Pete Alvarado did the background paintings, and I really love the ones that show off the diseases and get these little alien characters. Those are really cool. Happen to live in a community that has a health department. Unlike the Looney Tunes, this film is a full 10 minutes long. It's not a seven-minute cartoon. All of the prior industrial films that Warner's produced were in black and white. This is the first one they did in full Technicolor. And again, they show that off to great effect here. Your wife has had excellent prenatal care, advice and instruction, and good medical care. And of course, the health office will cooperate with your doctor and with your wife to see that the baby will have the best of care after. Stalling, of course, contributes his witty musical selections on the track. Strolling through the park one day, Rockabye Baby are among the tunes used in the background here. They use a Jimmy Dorsey wartime hit, This Is Worth Fighting For, is the song you hear at the beginning and the very, very end of the film. It's sort of the theme for the film. Nice feeling, isn't it, to know that everything's all right? Your family's well taken care of. You don't have to worry too much about your health. But there's one thing you do have to worry about, John. And now that you're a family man, you've got to face it. A local health department is costing you. <laughs> yes, John, it's costing you. It's interesting to watch this film. It's actually kind of rare for the Warner animators to animate human beings. Elmer Fudd accepted. Here they're trying to literally illustrate, you know, the average man and woman and child. And, of course, we go through the whole cycle of life with our lead character, Johnny Jones, here. And we see him as a baby, we see him as a man in the prime of his life, and later on we'll see him as an old man. In fact, we even get to see charts about how much weight he gains and his receding hairline and all sorts of things. Jones was the perfect choice to do this film because his style is so appealing. And I can't even imagine, you know, Robert McKimson doing this film, or even Frizz Freeling. I don't think we'd get these really good layouts and stylish artwork. It's very modern. For a cartoon from this era, it's a little bit ahead of its time in the stylings and the drawings. He got it. A little mild exercise, John. Let's take a look at that body of yours and... Perhaps we can point out why violent exercise isn't good for you. This part always grosses me out. You get the person's <laughs> veins and capillaries, and, and then I look like that. I'm sorry to say it, I do. But at least I'm not bigger than that. And more pipe needed to cover the ground. More work, too, for your heart. And remember, John, that heart isn't getting any younger. So let's get more rest and take it a bit easier. Oh, by the way, it uh, might be well to cut down on the food a little. Hey! Jones did a lot of his own key drawings, and you can really see his artwork in this film. And the animators follow that very, very well. Cancer, heart disease, and diabetes are the big killers. Now wait just a minute. Don't get panicky. Nobody said you have these diseases. With a few simple precautions, you'll have very little to worry about. Periodic checkups by your own doctor are the most important thing. Don't wait until you're sick. Always remember, early diagnosis and early treatment. The film is actually a pretty economically created film. There's obviously a lot of charts, still pictures, letters on screen, things that don't move. The expense in this cartoon is really that there's so much artwork that's used, particularly the static artwork. In fact, there's three background painters credited for this film, and that's pretty rare. Usually it was one background painter per cartoon, but there's so many pieces of static art that are required here that that's where the budget went more than the animation itself. 25 to 1, that he'll be born into a community with inadequate public health service, or none at all. So it looks like Johnny's chances of being among the 118,481 new babies who will die next year. Despite its production pedigree and Oscar-winning status, so much for so little has been rarely seen. Its topical message became quickly dated. 
and its use as an information tool has been rendered obsolete. With no commercial value, it has been vaulted and forgotten for decades. It's great that we have a chance to see it here on this disc. Thank you.